Hi guys, I'm Tabitha. It is so nice to have you all here with me tonight. We are going to um, do an illustration of a really fun little gingerbread house. Um, I hope that you guys were able to print off the little download guy. He was a little PDF. Um, we're going to need that as well as just some basic watercolor supplies tonight. We are going to be using um, any kind of watercolor paper that you have. Even if you don't have watercolor paper on hand, you can just use a really nice thick paper that will hold up and we're going to play. And even if it does not turn into something that you ultimately keep forever, um, you got the practice and you can recreate it again later. Um, we are going to use um, the ink tense pan by Derwent is what I am going to be using for my watercolor palette. It is just really vivid, really nice. It blends easily. And I think you guys are going to be impressed with how um, everything looks on, when you move it onto the paper. So whatever watercolor pan you have, if you have the ink tense one, that's going to be awesome as well. Um, I do have an extra palette because I like to mix my colors a lot. So if you have another palette or a paper plate, styrofoam plate, anything like that, you can use that to mix as well. There's all, there's usually room in the lid of your paint palette, but that's just never enough for me. So I like to have an extra one on hand. Um, we do have these awesome water brushes that are super fun. Um, they're self-loading with the water, so it just eliminates the amount of like dipping into the water basin and then kind of like dragging off the side to make sure that you have everything um, not super saturated. It just lets you control the water flow as you go. So I like to use these and I'll use these tonight, but you could use any brush that you have on hand. Um, and then you are gonna need graphite paper. Graphite paper is gonna be how we transfer our image onto our watercolor paper. So graphite carbon transfer paper is gonna be shiny on one side and dull on the other. So we are going to start by laying this shiny side down, okay? The shiny side is gonna be against our watercolor paper. And then we are going to take our little printed guy and we are going to line that up to center onto our piece. So when I did this PDF for you, I sized it at eight by 10 so that you could frame it if you wanted to, you could give it as a gift or put it on your mantle, whatever you wanna do with it. Um, this is gonna be, if you're using just a traditional watercolor paper, they're usually sized at nine by 12. So you may have to trim it up a little bit. So just kind of center him in the middle and then you can just, eyeball that and then cut it to size. If you have a paper cutter or even a ruler and um, pencil, you can size that guy up to make it fit in whatever frame you choose. So with that, I'm gonna grab a little bit of tape. So drafting tape, masking tape, washi tape, anything like that will work well. We just wanna make sure that we get all three layers. So our little printed paper, our transfer paper and our watercolor paper. I want my tape to touch all three of those and just hold everybody in the same spot so that I don't get um, crazy wonky lines as I'm going through tracing. So you just kind of want to line everybody up like that. And then you'll grab a pencil or you can even, if you don't have a pencil on hand, you can even grab the back of your brush and just use the, the blunt hard side of your brush. All you need to do is make an impression and it's gonna transfer that carbon um, graphite over. So we want to follow all of the lines that we did that are on this drawing. And a good way for me to do that is by using a pencil because I can see what I've drawn over and what I haven't. So I like to work left to right because I'm right-handed. If you are left-handed, you may work in the opposite direction. And again, with watercolor, um, there it is more translucent than your traditional um, acrylic or oil paint. So you don't wanna push like with all your might. I'm a little heavy-handed, so my carbon transfer comes out pretty dark. You can go over it with a little eraser if it's too dark for you, if you feel like you're gonna have a lot of lines poke through. But um, I just like to go over it as light as possible and that graphite paper is gonna grab it anyway. So I just start over here and I work item by item and I just give it a pretty quick little trace right over top of the black printed line. 
if you mess up, it's really not the end of the world, but definitely don't try to erase it because there's no erasing with graphite paper. It is just on there. And you can try to erase off the watercolor paper, but you definitely cannot erase off of the top page what you're tracing over. I've watched kids in class kind of struggle with that and try to erase on top. I'm like, no, 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 you're just gonna make a big smudge on top of the paper. It's kind of funny. So now that I've got my little lollipops done, I'll take my house. I'll start with my house. And I like to do little short strokes to keep my lines straight on that. If I try to do one even line dragging all the way down, I usually get a little wild and crazy. So little short strokes will help you do that. And you definitely don't have to do the details of like the little dots on there unless you want to. Um, those can be added after. And if you don't like something on this little gingerbread house that I've drawn for you, you can just leave it out. You can simply not put it on there. So say you're not a big fan of the wreath, say you wanted to do like a peppermint wreath or something like that instead, just don't, you know, don't trace my wreath, do whatever you would like to do on your finished piece. So I'm going down the little roof here and don't stress too much about perfectly straight lines. You're gonna have opportunities to work with the watercolor and cover up anything that looks a little wonky. And we like wonky, wonky gives it character. And these are very whimsical pieces anyway. So hopefully this gets you guys kind of in the getting ready to make for holiday season. It's approaching us a little more quickly than I expected this year, but I think it'll be fun once it gets here. All right, now I'm moving down to my little wreath. almost forgot to do the outside of the door. That's why I do like to use the pencil because I can look off to the side and see if I actually covered it or forgot. And then I'll show you here in a second my little cheat to make sure that I covered everything properly. All right, so when I think I've finished, I'm gonna peel one corner up. And what I'm gonna do is take that tape off of the graphite transfer paper and the white paper. And I'm gonna kind of lift that up and look and see if I got everything. So give it a little look and see if everything looks good. If it does, which I think I got everything, I can go ahead and pull that off and be done with it. Um, if I needed to clean any of these little lines up, I can do my best to kind of soften them with an eraser. If there's something that you got a big mar on there, like where my hand rests a lot over here, I get some smudges, but generally it looks okay. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start 
to fill things in. So with watercolor, it can be done with um, your colors in your palette, but I like to leave anything that I want to stay white, you're gonna leave the paper. So with watercolor, you'll just leave the white. So if you want the front of your house to have um, white fronts like it is fallen snow, just work around that, leave the white. And I'll show you how to add some little light, subtle um, hues of blue around that to make it look like snow just with highlights, but you're gonna leave anything you want white. You won't actually paint it white. You'll just leave it white um, for the paper to show through. So we'll start with the gingerbread house. And I'm gonna mix up a little bit of brown because I want to use a tiny bit of my natural brown in here and a little bit of the yellow ochre together because that'll make a nice brown. So I'll pull that together in my little pan and it'll make like a warm gingerbread color for me. So that's gonna give me a decent amount. Maybe I'll mix up a little bit more. I'd rather have more than not enough. little touch of brown there and I'll go back through and give him like toasty edges too but this is going to be my main main color so this yellow ochre is really what's going to provide a lot of the warmth for us so I'm going to grab a bigger brush and pull a little bit of extra water into here to thin him down And now give it a good mix. I wanna work um, you know, with a light layer first and then I can always build on it. So I'll start over here around the edges. I'm gonna leave my top here white cause that's gonna be snow or icing, whichever you would prefer for it to be. And I'm gonna work with that gingerbread color that I created all the way around this little front of the roof area. So I just wanna smooth that as I go. It's gonna be a little darker on that edge and that's okay because I am gonna come back through with the darker and make it look a little toasty. And I'm working wet on dry with this, but you could do wet on wet with this as well. I just like for this particular application, wet on dry seems to work for this smaller, smaller scale area. If we were doing wet on wet, we would take clear water and we would cover this area and then we would apply the brown to it, the tan to it. But since it's such a small area, I'm gonna stick with wet on dry for him at least. And I'm just gonna go around everything here and get it all one nice base coat consistent, you know, as, as consistent as possible, one base coat of this tan that I've created. If you feel like you've gotten it too dark in one spot, you can always add a little bit of water. For me, I'll just click the button on my brush and move it around. Most watercolor dries about 30%, um, it dries at about 30% of the color that what you apply. So you lose like 70% of the color um, with watercolor. But I feel like ink tents, you get um, a little more than half. I feel like it, you don't have to work as many coats in. So that is one of the things I like about the ink tents line in particular. It dries quite a bit more vivid than traditional watercolor that I've used. I've used a lot of different brands. And this one is pretty bright as noted by the name Ink Tense. <laughs> it's, not just a, it's not just a fun catchy name. So here's where I could click and add a little more water just to smooth these harsh lines here. And that helps me to give him pretty even application. Now 
And if we get, you know, multiple brush stroke lines, layers that overlap, that's okay. We'll have lots of opportunity to, um, you know, move that around and add some of the like toasty look to it. Add some of that natural brown back in and give it a baked look and it'll smooth everything out. And not to mention watercolor is usually not flawless. And that's one of the things I love about it. Hey, Tabitha, it's Molly. Someone's yeah. asking what you do if you go over the line. If you go over the line, you just roll with it. You know what? Because that is like I said, there's going to be mistakes and it's a little bit whimsical. It adds character to it, truthfully. it There are no perfect, like there are areas, it's hard for you to see on your screen, but there are definitely areas in mine that I've gone over the lines that I've drawn for myself. We're going to have an opportunity to add in um, some ink at the end and we're going to outline. And we're also going to go back in here with a little bit more of this brown. Actually, I'll show you right now because we reached the end of that area. I'm gonna go back in with this darker brown and we're gonna create some areas where it's a little bit toastier. So that's a good way to cover up any um, areas that you didn't necessarily like either. You could have more of a little toasty section. So if you you know went over a line up in here, it could just be a darker toasty section. Nobody's gonna, nobody's gonna be looking that close at it. And then the thing with the darker color, layering it back over, you can really use that water on your brush, clean water, just to smooth everything out. Um, when you add another dark layer next to it, just use the water next to it to smooth everything out and help it to blend a little better than having like that stark dark line. If you feel like your paper starts to well up, if you're using a lot of water on yours and you feel like your paper starts to buckle or bend a little bit, you can grab some of that tape that we used and just tape it to whatever surface you're using. Sometimes I'll use a big book or I'll use a um, clipboard, something like that. And that is where you can leave that tape to while you're working and it'll just smooth everything out for you. But we're just gonna work around the edge of this little house and give him or her some toasty values, some darker around the edges. And you can see that, especially around in this area, it just gives it more dimension. It makes it look a little more realistic if gingerbread houses, you know, whimsical little gingerbread houses are realistic things in and of itself. <laughs> So again, just using that darker natural brown out of my palette, watered down with a little bit of the yellow ochre and then a little bit of clear water and just smoothing it out and bringing it out to these edges here, bringing it in towards the center and just helping it to have a nice gradient towards the center of the gingerbread house. And it helps clean up any problem areas if you overlapped the, if you overlapped strokes on top of each other and made kind of a solid line anywhere. That second coat, the first coat, it's kind of like when you make a cake, that crumb coat that looks, doesn't look great. And then you come back through and you make that nice clean coat over top of it. If we have any bakers with us, this is kind of how that is. This, that second coat really does the work. First coat just gets it on there. So that should smooth everything out. Second coat looks good. I'll just do a little bit of shadowing underneath my peppermint window up here. And he's looking pretty good. You can add a little bit of shadowing underneath your wreath for dimension if you want, underneath your little windows. 
Anywhere that you want to emphasize some shadowing, just throw that natural brown, a darker brown right underneath it. All right, so my gingerbread portion of the house is filled in. Um, the next thing that I typically move on to is my accent color. So if that's the door, if that's the windows, whatever you want to choose. Oh, oh, before we forget, before our paint dries up, we do want to fill in the middle of these little wreaths. Those are actually the gingerbread house color too. I overlooked those guys. There we go. All right, so after we fill in the center of the little wreath, we can go to whatever accent color we want for the door. Um, maybe I'll mix up like a light pink. I'll use some of this poppy red and fuchsia to make a warm pinky coral color and a little bit of white. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this one. I'm just going to take him around the edge of my door. And I'm going to do my best to, to keep a little bit of a buffer because that gingerbread is still a little wet and it could cause that spidering out. So I leave a little tiny bit of space between that. If it does happen, it's not the end of the world. It'll be just fine but I like to leave a space to prevent it if possible. And then this one, you'll just follow around just like we did with the gingerbread house and work around that little doorknob and try to smooth everybody out to keep mixing up more. And the white in here is really nice to make pastel colors with. Um, Derwent actually makes a really awesome pastel pan now too that's super fun. So that one's got your pastels already mixed up for you. All right. And once you get into a bigger area, you can just go back and forth across and fill that in and then just kind of smooth any lines or brush strokes that you see. I'm going to take him all the way to the bottom there. Okay. So that's gonna be my accent color, this, this pinky color. Um, I'm gonna carry that throughout a couple different areas of my piece. I'm going to use it in um, this little window up here. So while I've got it mixed up, I'll go ahead and throw it into the little window up here. My little peppermint stripes. And the little peppermint stripes, oddly enough, are not even. So I just cover that one just a little bigger than the other one. It's not even to do every other one a different color. That's what happens when you draw in black and white before you fill things in with color. <laughs> you make little silly 
mistakes like that, but easily corrected, just cover them up, make a wider stripe there. And then my little bows on top of my wreath are going to be pink as well. So I'll just fill those in while I'm here. And then I'm gonna let, I could continue on with other things that are gonna be pink like down here, but I don't wanna rub my hand through it. So I'm gonna let that be, I'm gonna let that pink set. I can reactivate it with water when I need to, and I'll move on to um, the rest of the house. So the chimney, you can decide if the chimney is going to be like peppermint striped, you could do it um, really however you want. You could do, you could do the same color as the house. I think I'll make it look kind of peppermint striped. So I'll just take my pink through and draw little pink lines through there and just hide them where the icing is kind of falling down. Easy peasy. And if they don't look perfectly straight, that's okay. Mine are a little wonky and that's still cute. Um, I'm also going to mix up a little bit of blue because I want to highlight some of this icing snow stuff going on in the top. So I'm going to take a little bit of this bright blue, take just a dab of that bright blue, and then a little bit of turquoise and a touch of white and make just a really soft turquoisey blue. And that's gonna be what I accent the edges with. So when we're looking at snow, yeah, it's white, but there's always gonna be a little bit of reflection on it. So I just wanna bring that out by just kind of highlighting a little bit of the curves under here. And I'm not taking it all the way. I'm just doing a little bit on each one just a little bit above where that gingerbread stops. Just like three quarters of the way around. And it's gonna dry a lot lighter than it looks right here. And it'll be super subtle. If you wanna take it along the top too, you can do some dashes across the top. You could do the whole thing. You could outline the whole thing if you really wanted to. I just do a, a little bit just to show that it's there. I also like to do that around the little melting part on the top of the chimney. Just a little bit of it. And when it dries, it'll be, it'll be pretty subtle. Um, I do want to create a really soft yellow next that's gonna go in and it's gonna make my gingerbread house look glowy. It's gonna look like there's life in there. So I'm gonna take a little bit of my sun yellow and mix it with a little bit of white and make like a pastel yellow. All right, so when we add this pastel yellow inside of these little window panes, it's just gonna look warm and inviting like somebody lives in there.
and really on anything that you're doing, um, holiday themed, if it has windows in it, I really feel like just giving it that light yellow glow from inside just creates that warmth. Just like a buttery yellow. It just makes them look, you know, like lights are on, something's going on inside there. If you're traditionally, if you're doing windows um, of a house or if you're doing like a watercolor portrait of someone's home and you wanted it to be more realistic, you would go with like a Payne's gray, um, really lightened up, like a super, super soft bluey gray. That's gonna look the most like real glass. But in situations like this, I like to use a really light yellow. It just looks warm and inviting. It looks like they are, you know, hanging out inside making cookies or something. All right. So now we need to make a fun little green that is going to work for our wreaths and maybe some accent colors. Um, maybe add it to the little peppermint. Maybe he'll have a little bit of green. I'm going to do a little bit of this kiwi and then mix a little bit of our darker green and even a little bit of the deepest green, the racing green. And then add some more white back in. Just give it that creamy, minty, mint green look. Now, if I wanted it to be a little more like on the minty side, not so, not so like shamrock green, which is what I want. I want it to be mintier. So I'm gonna add a little bit more white, but then I'm also gonna add a touch of turquoise and that'll bring it up to where I want it to be. Just that little bit of blue helps it. And this turquoise in this set is my favorite. It's like the brightest, happiest turquoise ever. There we go. And if you're not 100% sure that the color that you're using is what you want, don't put it on your piece yet. Keep, I always keep a scrap paper um, beside me and I'll test it like right here. Like, does this look like the color that I'm going for? Just, you know, keep a scrap piece of paper next to you when you're watercoloring to test your colors first and see if you're in the right realm. I am like a color mixologist. So it's not always um, gonna be that simple. So if you're, you know, if you're not ready to commit to putting it on your paper, just keep a test sheet of paper next to you to make sure that you're in the right realm of where you wanna be. All right, this is pretty much exactly what I wanted. Now with this, I'm gonna keep pressing this button and pulling that pigment towards the center because I don't wanna add any more. I want it to lighten up a little bit as I go. So by adding clean water to it and moving it around, I get that variation that I'm hoping for in here. I can come back through and add a little bit of white on top of it to give it some dimension after it dries up a little bit. So these little wreaths are just going to be this solid green until we come back and highlight with a little bit of white in a minute. Again, using clear water to smooth that out if you've got any really harsh lines around the edges or anything. 
then we can move on to this little tree over here while we've got this nice green mixed up. You know what, I do wanna add, let's, let's go back to this guy for a second. I wanna throw in a center line between each of these white and pink. I wanna give another color to that mint up there. So I'm gonna use that same green to just draw a center line between those. And then I might just hit the edge of this little wrapper over here and use that green in these little wrinkles, the candy wrapper wrinkles that I've created, just to kind of bring it together. And then I'll probably use that green for my heart as well, my little heart on the door. You can do that, obviously, whatever color you like, but I'm going to use that to tie everybody together. Okay. And then I'm going to start at the top of this tree and I'm going to use a big swoop of that green and then clear water from my brush to move that around. That's much lighter on this side. So I'll come back in and I'll use the edge of this side, use that full pigment again on the right side and then smooth him back towards the center. And then for the second section down, I think I wanna use the blue. I'll use the blue and bring that back around. You could use the green all the way down. I just feel like using the blue this time. I'm gonna smooth him out. And then for the bottom one, I'll go back to the green. Just wiggle that around. So it's always gonna look a little different if you're using a regular brush versus a water brush. For me, I use the pigment that I mixed up and then I add my water as I go. Um, for you, if you are using a standard brush, you are just gonna control that by the amount of water that you have loaded onto your brush before you dip into the pigment. So it's gonna look a little different for you than it looks with the water brush, but you just adjust it with clear water going back over. So I want to give a darker line under each layer to create that little shadow from the layer above it on the tree. So I'll add the darker green there and then I'll go back through and I will do a second layer of the blue up here so that I get that shadow that the layer above it would create. I can smooth that down. That just gives us a little bit more dimension. And you can really decide what you do with the bottom here underneath what goes behind your little gumdrops. I just filled it in with a light blue just so that it's not a big gap sitting there. So we need to decide what you wanna do with the sides of your house next. I am probably going to do candy canes again on this one. I'll match my little chimney up top. I'm gonna to go back into this pink that I have left over. 
add a little more water to it to activate it. And then really simply just tiny little pink lines on the diagonal top to bottom. And they're super cute, super sweet. Now, I will flip my page because I don't want to stick my hand in that and I will go opposite on the other one. So that's always how I work. A lot of people um, will tape their watercolor to their surface. Um, I always tape it to something that I can move like a book or a piece of MDF board or a clipboard or something like that, because I like to be able to turn my piece. Um, if I have it taped down to my work surface, that's not gonna work for me because I'm always sticking my hand and things. So I like to be able to turn it. Um, so we're gonna work on these little lollipops and these little gumdrops at the bottom but we are going to mix up all of our colors and we're going to work on them kind of simultaneously so that we have, um, you know, a little bit of each color working. We can, you can just mix up three colors that you really like. You can repeat um, that light blue. You can mix up whatever you like. I'm probably going to stick with like a violet. I think I'm going to take just a regular violet and some white. So I'll take this violet and dark plum. And I will stick those in a well and give them some white to make them like a softer version. Um, you could do hot pink, you could do whatever you whatever your heart desires. I will probably add some fuchsia to this light pink that I had working over there and make a version of a hot pink fuchsia. Maybe I'll sub that out instead of my plum. So I'll go fuchsia and lavender. Take a little bit more of this violet. And then maybe turquoise, straight turquoise. And these will be fun gumdrop colors. There we go. So once I've got my main color, then I'm just gonna grab some of that extra white and mix them up to make them softer. I love the white in this palette because it, it's really, it's a nice opaque white where sometimes when you get a white in a watercolor palette, it doesn't do much for you. I feel like this one has really good coverage. And you'll see when I go back in to highlight a little bit on the wreath and on the tree. It has really, it, it's really nice. Sometimes we have to use like acrylic white in watercolor to get the coverage on it, but it's nice to have this white right in your palette. All right, so those are gonna be my gumdrop colors, lavender, fuchsia and turquoise. And those will be the colors I use for my little lollipops on the side as well. So we'll take whichever color you want to start with. And I'm going to do my center. And I'm going to just follow the lines that I drew. All right, I'm going to follow that all the way around. My traced line. 
And if those spirals are hard for your hand to do, that's normal. Your hand shouldn't be able to just like spiral like that perfectly. Just do it in little sections. And then I'm gonna let that sit for a minute because I want that to be nice and bold. So I'll move on to my second one and do the same thing. That's it. And the last one will be this little guy up here. And I'll let those hang out for a second so that those lines stay nice and vivid. And I'll just start by randomly coloring these little gumdrops in down here. So I don't want them, I, I don't necessarily want it to be a pattern. Yours can be a pattern if you want. I just randomly color them in. Um, you know, one turquoise here, one turquoise over here, maybe another turquoise over here. and maybe one there. Maybe that guy too. And these are gonna be super simple. Just fill those in real quick. Those can kind of go in any order you want. And you don't have to do the same exact colors that you chose for the lollipops, you could do, you know, the reds and the greens that you did up top as well. And if you're working right next to the other one, just leave a little buffer between them if you can, because they will kind of bleed into each other, spread in. They like to take over each other's territory. All right, so now that my little gumdrops are covered, I'm gonna work back on these lollipops at the side. So I'm gonna take whatever color that matches and I'm gonna do a quick wash over it. So I'm gonna use a little bit of the pigment and a lot of water and do a quick wash. And that's still gonna give me those nice bold lines but it's gonna fill the rest in. The reason I let that initial boundary line that we painted on there set up is so that it stands out. So it stays nice and vibrant. So I'll do it again with the turquoise one. I'll add my pigment, but I'll use a lot more water. Kind of pull that down through. This guy got a little more pigment than I would have wanted. And so what I can do with that, my oopsie is gonna be a paper towel. You just take your finger inside the paper towel and dab it and it will pull a lot of that 
right off. And it lightens it up pretty much instantly. And then last but not least is our little pink guy over here. I'll rinse my brush and do a light wash of pink over him. If you felt like your wash was too heavy, kind of like my turquoise one, you can even take clear water after you've let that boundary set up a little bit. You can even use clear water because it'll pull just enough pigment off that to actually help. All right. Last but not least, we're going to take, we're going to go right back into that white that we had, the straight white if you've got it, and we're going to do just some little dots on this wreath and maybe some highlights over here around the edges of our tree. So just a little bit of white. If you don't have white in your palette or if your white's not a great opac you know, opaque white, you can always grab a little bit of acrylic white paint and water it down a bit and go back over it. Gouache is also gonna work for you. Um, just something that's gonna be a little bit more opaque than what we've got working. And that just gives these like a nice highlight roundness to them, makes them look more like candy. Just a touch of white. And even on those lollipops, it's going to help a lot. Just take a big arc and just follow the lines that you drew and go around the top or the bottom. And you can do it on, you know, anywhere that you want to show a little bit of light reflecting. You can do it in your windows, anywhere you like, but that's just going to kind of bring it to life a little bit. The final touch of this is going to be to take your black ink pen. Um, you want to make sure it's a waterproof ink and you can go around and outline everything that you wanted to keep um, the boundaries on. And this is what I was saying before when somebody asked um, if you went out of the lines, that's okay. We're going to, we're going to recreate our lines with this black pen. So what you can do is you can go through, um, if you want to use a straight edge, if you want to use a, an actual ruler and set it up and create these nice crisp lines, this is the point you can do that as well. So for me, I like a whimsical look. I'm just going to draw it by hand and I'm going to make sure that the part that I'm drawing on is not super wet, but I'll go through and I will take my liner pen and just go down and outline everything that I really want to stand out. And that's really only if you like this look. I, you know, as a graphic artist and an illustrator, I like, you know, my style with my bold lines around things. So that's how I get that look. Um, you can go through and you can add your little dots to the gumdrops at this point. It's just where you're gonna get your little details in there. And it really is just all about what you think is, you know, aesthetically pleasing for your piece. If you don't like that black line, by all means, do not add it in there. So now for my gumdrop tree, I'll add a few little sugar crystals or reflections, whatever we want to call them. And to me, that just, that finishes them off. It brings them to life. He looks, you know, you can definitely see he's a little bit more 
finished looking now for me. And then I'm going to flip my paper over because I don't want to stick my hand back in that ink and I'm going to go through and outline my windows. And my door. everything that final touch that little boundary if you wanted to do um, something you know like a little you can do like the cross hatch marks um, in the windows if you want to show a shine I don't necessarily do that it's more of like a graphic art like comic thing but you can do that too if you really want to show that these are glass This is where I bring that fluffiness of that little wreath to life. And I'll flip it again and go around the outside of my little mint. The hardest shapes for me are always circles. I feel like I go a little wonky in them sometimes, so I like to move my paper towards me. Outline the sections in here. And this, it's hard for you guys to see probably from where you are, but when I outline, I'm going to pull him up here. This is really where you can see I had a lot of areas that I, my brown kind of seeped into the white area here. When you put that black border on it, you don't see the discrepancies. You don't see these little areas where I had, you know, a little bit of brown go over into the white area. It's also what's going to help this little roof area right here because you get to redefine those borders with that black pen and we will finish out the roof little chimney Bring the siding down on the candy cane. Fix our gumdrops. Give them some dots. And then last flip. We're going to do the lollipops right here. And last but not least, the little stems, the little sticks of the lollipops. And that is that if you, you know, drew your final line over top of anything and you have like this stray pencil line, like I have one right here, great. 
stray pencil line. If you have a kneadable eraser, that's amazing to just like clean those little edges up. That works great. Um, other than that, I mean, he's pretty done. You can sign your name to it and you can frame that puppy and put it on display somewhere. You can give it to somebody as a gift or whatever you would like to do with it. If you scan it in, you can have it printed off for holiday cards. Definitely um, use your artwork to you know, bring joy to yourself, your home and others. Find a fun way to give it away. Um, even if you don't give the original away, make copies of it. But I hope that you guys really enjoyed this. Um, I appreciate you joining me tonight. Um, thanks for taking so much time out of your evening. I know this was a late one. Thank you, Michaels and Derwent, for letting me present this to you guys. I would love if you followed along with me on social media. We are um, under Mick Harper Manor on Facebook and Instagram. I love to teach all ages. I love teaching intergenerational classes for adults and kids. So I hope that you guys join us for something else in the future. Um, grab yourself this awesome paint pan. It's gonna make your holiday creating so much more fun. You know, it dries permanent on everything. You can paint this stuff on wood. It's so super fun. So I hope you guys had a great time. Thanks so much for joining me. And I hope to see you for something else really soon. Thanks, guys. <laughs>